In this video, we're going to look at how we would go about calculating volumes of simple and compound or composite shapes. If we start with the object at the top there, we have a cuboid. Now, whenever we calculate the volume of an object, we need to multiply three length dimensions together. So if we look at this shape here, it has a width, W. It has a length, L, and it has a height, H. Therefore, the volume of that cuboid would be its width times its length times its height. And it wouldn't matter which order those were in. It could also be its length times its width by its height and so on. So long as we're multiplying them three dimensions together, that would give us the volume of the cuboid. In the case of the second shape, we don't have a simple object. What we have is a compound object. And there's a number of different way ways that we can approach this. First of all, we can imagine that this object is actually split into two cuboids. We've got a cuboid at the top, which I'm going to call volume 1, and a cuboid at the bottom, which I'm going to call volume 2. The total volume of that shape is just going to be volume 1 plus volume 2. Okay, so we can add the two volumes together, and this could have more than two volumes. It might be three, four, five volumes. If we calculate the individual volumes and add them together, then we'll get the total volume of the shape. But there's a number of different ways of approaching this one. As an alternative, what we could do is we could calculate the cross-sectional area of that front face using the methods from the previous tutorial. And once we have that area, A, we could times it by the length of the object, L. So the volume of that shape is the frontal area or the cross-sectional area times the length. And that would also give us the volume. The area would be in metres squared times the length in metres would give us a volume in metres cubed. But there is still one more further way that we can calculate the volume of this shape. What we could do is we could observe that there's actually a section of material missing here. And instead what we could do is we could keep the length the same, L, we could keep the width of the object as W, but we could calculate we could calculate the volume of the object using this height here. If we did length times width times height, that would give us the total volume including that section of cube. But in actual fact, if we want the volume of the shape that was previously displayed, we would then need to subtract this volume here, which I'm going to call V3. So an alternative way of looking at that shape, or the volume of that shape, would be volume equals length times width times height to give the outer volume, and then minus V3 because that piece of material has been taken away. All of the other rules that we've discussed for areas apply to volumes. First of all, before we approach any question, we must convert all of our units to SI units. So lengths must be expressed in metres, widths in metres, heights in metres. Before we run any numbers, as otherwise our final answer won't come out accurately. Assuming we do that, assuming we do our lengths and widths and heights in metres, our volume is going to be in the SI units metres cubed. And the same for areas and lengths. When we come to this example here, where we calculate the frontal area and times it by the length to get the volume, we must always use our areas in metres squared, which we should have anyway, providing we've used metres in the calculation of the area. And the length, again, will be in metres, which will yield a volume in metres cubed.